Hi everyone, I am Jackie. And if this is the first time you are on my channel, I welcome you. I hope you find something that is worth watching, something worth subscribing, all of that. Comment, all that. And if this is not your first time and you are a returning viewer, I appreciate you. You are the real MVP. Okay, yeah. so I sound out of breath because I ran up the stairs and I'm still working on getting in shape. <laughs> and I'm just not all the way there yet. Gosh. <laughs> but this video is going to be about my first year as a doctoral student. Yay! So yesterday I officially submitted my last assignment for one of my classes for this school year. And listen, y'all, this has been a rough week and I was just trying to manage and get it done. I am not a perfectionist. I would say that I'm more like an A minus B plus personality. So I like for things to be done well, but I'm not pressed on getting an A. Like, what do I need to do to pass the class? Especially when I'm like over it and I was really over it. <laughs> by the end of this week like I love to learn but some things bore me and don't keep me interested for long and I just be kind of over it so I know that people want to know like oh my gosh like okay you're in for your doctorate please tell me more well I'm glad you asked so I am studying for my doctorate in medical science in the executive in the executive leadership track at AT Steele University um and if I did not finish that word, it kind of sounded like I didn't, but AT Steel University. I chose that track because I have goals of becoming part of hospital policy change, healthcare policy change, becoming involved in administration. I believe that someone who works at the bedside is going to have a pretty good idea of what is necessary to keep you know, employees engage them, satisfied, and also take care of people because you have to take care of the people who are there taking care of the people. Um, from my experience, I have felt that administrative positions were more tailored and targeted towards nurse practitioners. And I mean, I'm a nurse, that's a PA. So, I mean, I feel I should be qualified. And what I wanted to do was make sure I had the credentials to have a seat at the table, flip over tables if I need to, make a change in any way possible. That's pretty much why I wanted to do this. It took me some time to decide to pursue my doctorates because I never really had any intention on going back to school. I mean, listen, I'm the first in my family to do it. So when you do it, you're like, shoot, this stuff is hard. You know, I have my associates, my bachelor's, my master's, and now I'm going to get my doctors. And after this, I promise, this is it. I can't keep going back to school. You know, it costs money, it costs time. And I used to study really well back when I was 20 and being like 36, I just listen. It takes a lot, a lot to get it done. So um, I just wanted to talk about like what my experience has been and do I recommend the program? What are my thoughts? What are my recommendations? So first, I would say that there are some classes that are really interesting and then there's some that I'm just like, Lord Jesus, let me just get through the class and just go through the motion. Um, I would say that it's probably like 50-50 for me this semester. I like classes that are engaging, especially when it's a distance learning program. So everything is online. We have discussion boards, there's Zoom meetings, and there's assignments and like I had to make a video for this class and from from this year, like this past set of classes, I had to make a video. I mean, there's papers and I will say that AT still has done a great job of not making it just papers and like research this, research that. There's definitely a research component. There's a research class and you need to be versed in the different research techniques. But we don't just write papers the entire time. There are discussions. You have to interact with your classmates. Um, they actually listen to the students, taking in some input as to like what can make the program better. So those things were pluses for me. Um, I would say that my favorite classes 
and the track that I have chosen so far have been the social determinants class. And I believe that every track has to take that. And what was so useful and great about that class is that it opens up your eyes as a healthcare provider to the healthcare disparities that exist and have been existing. Um, I think when you take a class and you have a better understanding, hopefully, now this is not always the case, but hopefully you get a better understanding and gain some empathy as to why one group has these health issues that they need to deal with versus another group. Why is access different and why are you having to deal with some of the issues you have to deal with professionally? Because these systems are in place and they've been in place and it's a systemic type thing. And while the data is out there, there's some things that are just not being done to address the issues, which is, you know, another reason why I want to get my doctor is, listen, y'all, I'm about to change the world. Mark my words. Be like, hey, you know what? On May 31st, 2020 Jackie says she is about to change the world and when I do it don't be surprised because I'm not coming to play <laughs> but okay my other class I like was the organizational leadership class and I like that class because man it just opened my eyes to how much information there is about leadership the leadership theories but then it also made me realize that we don't have great leadership and everybody that is in a leadership position should have to like take this course and apply the information. Cause it's one thing to know and be aware, but it's another thing to actually apply it. So, um, yeah, that was one of my favorite classes as well. I'm not a fan of statistics. I never was, <laughs> but you know, statistics and research and like, I understand the importance of it. And I just like, I just like other people to do their work for me and I don't mind interpreting it. I just don't like reading about it or learning about it or writing about it, but I've made it through that class. Um, quality, I didn't really like that either. I understand its importance. I understand, I, I just didn't like it y'all. It was boring to read. <laughs> And that's just me. For someone else, they may be like their cup of tea and they may be like, yes, this is it. It just wasn't, it wasn't for me. But I mean, I did learn a lot. I have been learning and that's part of the um, purpose and goal. You want to make sure you are actually learning. So I will say that I have been learning and these classes are going to be everything that you put into it. So if you put half work into it, you're going to get a half result. Now, for those who have never been on my channel, never watched any of my videos and have no clue, like, why is this even important to talk about? So, um, I think people need to have perspective. So if you decide that you want to be a physician assistant that pursues their doctorate, you want to know what it is you can do with that degree. And AT still has three tracks. They have a leadership track, which I'm in because I'm leading the boss. <laughs> um, they also have an educational track for people who want to go and teach. And then they have um, a clinical track for people who want to enhance their clinical skills. Um, and some of the decision making as to like which track is going to work best for you, I think it's best to really ask yourself, what is it you're hoping to gain? What is it that you want to do? Where are you trying to go? Because to obtain a doctor's degree, just to have doctor in your name is not probably beneficial for you, unless you're just rich and you got money to throw away at education, <laughs> you know, because this is an investment of money, time. Um, it's an investment from your family. There's definitely some sacrifice and you have to learn how to balance life. So um, as far as, let's see, what else would I advise people to do? Um, if you are considering a doctorate's program, yes, I am. I'm all for AT Steel University. It was decently priced because not only did I want to attend a program that is reputable for just their existence in medicine, but I also wanted to attend a program that was not going to break my pockets. And I will say that AT Steel University was one of the more affordable choices. They also had a structured um, program and a structured program for each track. And that was important to me. I wanted to not just have a doctorate and there's nothing to it. Like what, what is my focus? So I like that I'm able to focus in um, a specific area. And I will say that I chose this school because like, I wanted to be able to have a great relationship with the professors. And when I was expressing my interest, 
they reply, they hook you up with people to ask questions. Like they're really trying to root for you. So that's some of the reason I chose the school that I chose. Now there are plenty of schools out there and I say, ask yourself, what is it that you want? Where you're trying to go? How much you want to pay? Oh, and how much um, time you want to put into the program? And speaking of time, I think it is important to let you know that it is an investment of time. I would say on an average, I would put at the minimum five hours in a week, but as many as 20 hours, sometimes more, because there is a reading component. You have to read your text. You have to also get information from other sources, and that requires you to read as well. Um, you have to put things together, writing things up, and you can't just sit down in one day and do it all. I have had people ask me, hey, can I just use this one day off of, I have this one day off of work, will that be enough to get the work done? Eh, not really. Um, I just, I don't think it's realistic. Um, is it possible? Maybe, but maybe for a very select few, only because there are timed, um, let's see, discussions where you need to interact with one another and then there's the projects or assignments outside of the discussion so there's reading sometimes there's video watching there's a lot so i just don't think you can put that all into one day even if you like lock yourself in your room away from your family <laughs> and speaking of family it takes a family to support you um while you pursue this you need to have um, a good support system some structure some accountability partners and that's my family like my kids they be like mama did you do your homework and then i have to look at them like uh did you do your homework why are you coming for me <laughs> but no i appreciate it because then it's like yeah okay let me do my homework because they're watching they're watching i can't have them do something and i don't do it um i would also say that i have a very supportive fiance he is also on me about doing my homework. See, the problem is this. I get distracted. I be wanting to be like watching TV, playing the game on my phone, on Instagram, anything but the homework sometimes. Sometimes I'm just like, I don't want to do it. I don't want to do it. But I did it. I've done it. And yeah, so I have one more year and I'm excited that I've made it this far despite all the stress. You know, 2020 has been dealing us some cards, y'all. It, it's been real. <laughs> um, but I'm here because, and I, I wanted to just share that I made it through the first year. I'm trying to think of other pieces of advice. Oh, some stats. I think it's important to know that I am a mom of four kids. I have three teenagers one adult my fiance i have a full-time job i work full-time monday through friday eight to five no holidays no weekends though um, i'm grateful for the position that i have because there are some moments where i get time to do my homework at work because it's not as busy so i'm very fortunate for the position i'm in um i do think it may be very challenging if i worked like when I used to work in the emergency department and have to switch all my shifts and figure out my sleep. I I do find time to still try and exercise. Even though y'all heard me out of breath coming up the stairs today, y'all. I was just, because I went all the way to like downstairs and basement, coming back up, all the way up to the stair, up to the second floor, you know? But um, I do get up early enough to try and get some exercise. And I used to think I could get up early to do my homework. But when I wake up, I need to be doing something to keep me up because I am not a morning person. Like an early morning person just to be doing stuff. I'm just not it. I need to either be listening to something and um, moving around or I'm fall back to sleep. <laughs> um, yeah, so I thought it was important to share my first year experience um i was able to still go out of town i did go to china while i was in school and that was interesting because the time zone and my homework probably was a little bit late but yeah i made it i made it i'm doing well in my classes again i don't aim for a's i'm, I'm just an a student <laughs> you know <laughs> but um Yes, I would love to hear your questions. Um, if you want me to talk about something else regarding my doctorates, and yeah, 
So see you later.